Andrew Feinstein, The Shadow World, Inside the Global Arms Trade. The Shadow World, Inside the Global Arms Trade by Andrew Feinstein takes readers on a deep dive into the dark, mysterious, and thrilling world of the arms trade, shining a light on its powerful players and the devastating consequences it can have on people around the world. With stories of backroom deals, powerful lobby groups, and corrupt officials, this gripping book reveals the disturbing underbelly of the global arms industry and its profound impacts on governments and societies. From the largest arms producers like the United States and Britain to shady arms dealers and governments that turn a blind eye, you will discover the intricate web of illicit connections and deception that keep the wheels of the global arms trade spinning. The Murky World of the International Arms Trade The international arms trade is a murky world filled with shady characters and corruption. The annual global arms trade has reached $1.6 trillion, with the United States, Russia, Britain, France, and Germany as major players. Although the trade is a money-making machine for big arms manufacturers, such as BAE Systems and Lockheed Martin, it is catastrophic for poor people in Africa who are caught in conflicts fueled by the weapons. The trade is also detrimental to government spending on basic health care, as national security is used as a smokescreen to conceal details of arms deals. Unfortunately, the governments of the world have close relationships with the weapons industry, allowing bribery and corruption to occur frequently. The Corrupt Arms Deal The United States and Britain are top arms vendors, while Saudi Arabia is the biggest buyer and the most proficient at demanding bribes. With no arms industry, Saudi Arabia trades its oil riches for weapons. One deal, the Al Yamama contract, was the largest weapons deal ever completed and saved the UK's BAE from insolvency. The deal was paid not in cash but in oil, which helped disguise bribes and circumvented OPEC quotas. BAE paid for special favors, such as yachts, cars, side trips, and prostitutes. Other bribes included a Mercedes, Rolls-Royce, Aston Martin, and £250,000 for a Saudi princess's honeymoon. The deal also involved Margaret Thatcher's son, Mark, who later became involved in international intrigue. After the scandal, BAE attempted to reinvent itself as an ethical weapons maker and launched a green initiative. The Saudi-US Arms Trade the arms trade between Saudi Arabia and the United States faced several challenges due to political interests and mechanical issues. The Saudis opted for U.S.-made planes due to their reliability, but the U.S. Congress denied their request for fears of weapons going to terrorists. Later, when the Saudis lobbied for access to U.S. aircraft, they discovered how things worked in Washington with Prince Bandar revealing in a Senate meeting that $10 million would be required for approval. The U.S. eventually began to trade arms with the Saudis, with half of the contract price going back to the Middle Eastern country as bribes. Prince Bandar always received a cut and directed how much of the money should go to which members of the Saudi royal family. The Dangerous World of Arms Dealing The book delves into the life and criminal activities of Victor Bout, a Russian polyglot and pilot who built a massive fleet of aircraft and supplied weapons to various groups, including terrorists and rebel forces in Angola, Somalia, and Lebanon. The author highlights the overstatement of the economic benefits of the arms business and the role of powerful PR machines, think tanks, and lobbyists. The book also touches on the blurred lines between private and public interests, as noted by the retired U.S. Air Force Colonel, Sam Gardner, who suggests Dick Cheney doesn't see the difference. Finally, the author mentions the dark side of the arms business, as exemplified by Bout's evasion of taxes and his eventual arrest after the United States targeted him. The Deadly Lucrative Arms Business The race for arms manufacture and supply can be deadly. The devastating effects of supplying weapons to governments and organizations are higher than we can imagine. This is revealed in the story of the consortium composed of BAE and Saab, and their £6 billion arms deal negotiation with South Africa. Even as Tony Blair and the Swedish Prime Minister lobbied for the British-Swedish bid, 
brokers made off with 300 million pounds in fees, leaving many South Africans infected with HIV and dying of AIDS-related illnesses. But the consequences were even more deadly, with 355,000 South Africans losing their lives while the delivered arms reduced to half its original quantity. The corruption and politics in the weapons industry The U.S. weapons industry influences political decisions and government spending, resulting in corruption and inefficiency. The Pentagon is largely controlled by the military-industrial complex, and arms manufacturers rely on political engineering to spread contracts and subcontracts to as many congressional districts as possible. This ensures that congressmen bring jobs to their districts and are unlikely to cut defense spending, even if it means wasting taxpayer money on unnecessary projects. The transition from the Bush administration to Obama's has done little to curb the weapons business hold on government spending, as evidenced by a $7,662 coffeemaker in a Lockheed Martin transport plane and a claw hammer that cost the U.S. Navy $435. Military spending continued to climb under George H.W. Bush, who had close business ties with the Saudis. The author suggests that the U.S. must address corruption in the weapons industry if it wants to avoid the same fate as South Africa, which suffered from a similar problem. The Rise of Defense Industry Following the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the U.S. military no longer had enemies to fight, leading to the dwindling of the defense industry's revenues and a wave of mergers. The September 11 attack proved to be a turning point, as the hawkish advisors surrounding George W. Bush, including Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld, pushed for an increase in spending on defense. With Bush's administration loaded with defense industry executives, the White House concluded that only private companies that received no-bid contracts could respond to new threats, funneling billions into defense and boosting the Pentagon's budget to the highest spending on defense at any time since the Second World War. War Profiteering the Vietnam War hero Randy Cunningham cashed in on his exploits by starting a speaking tour, training pilots, and taking credit for the movie Top Gun. Running for Congress, Cunningham won the election by emphasizing his patriotism and military experience. After September 11, he helped the defense contractor MZM Incorporated land $100 million in contracts to keep the defense spending high. However, Cunningham's political career ended when reporters discovered that MZM had bought him a $1.5 million home, a yacht, and also paid his yacht club dues and fees. Cunningham received an eight-year prison sentence and had to pay a $1.8 million fine for his wrongdoing. The book suggests that war profiteering is a symptom of how business gets done in the world's war machine. The shadow world exposes the dark underbelly of the global arms trade, which is built on corruption, bribery, and double dealing, spanning from multinational corporations to arms dealers like Victor Bout. Highlighting the roles of powerful countries such as the United States, Britain, Russia, and China, as well as the intricacies of deals like the Al Yamama contract with Saudi Arabia, Feinstein illustrates the devastating impact of the arms trade on people across the globe. With national security used as a smokescreen to conceal the corrupt nature of the arms business, this book offers a unique look at the dire consequences of funding wars and the pressing need for transparency and regulation in the weapons industry. As a comprehensive and insightful analysis of the global arms trade, the shadow world will leave you with a clearer understanding of the alarming scale and complexity behind the business of war.